Okay, I made a video before on how to make a tapered Flemish twist ring, but uh, we're gonna make a three color tapered Flemish twist ring. And it's just a little different on how you twist the ends. Um, so it comes out nice. So we're gonna make the video and you can compare the two. Hopefully you'll try it, it'll come out nice. We're gonna make a red, white, and blue string today. All right, and uh, put it on a 62 inch bow. It's gonna be X99 material. It's gonna be 22 strands. And I'm gonna use a halo serving. That's um, 0.24. And there'll be a separate, uh, there's a separate video on how I put a serving on a bow because it would just take too much time to combine the two. Okay, so I'm gonna start making the strands. I'm gonna stop the video, start making the strands. When the three stand, strands are complete, we're gonna move forward. Okay, this is my AMO board. We have it on 62 AMO. We're gonna make a couple of strings for my uh, bows I teach with, but they happen to be lent out. But I do have a 62 inch lefty bow that we're gonna put them on and set the strings up, okay? These are tapered Flemish twist strings. And the taper is, you see how these little nail heads are there? They're spaced a quarter of an inch apart. And as you complete, the strands to the count that you need when you cut them in the middle and you make the loop, you twist the loop and you come around. Now these are staggered because they're cut. As you twist them up, they taper down until they disappear into the string. And that's how you get a taper that goes into the string. It looks nicer, right? Some guys make strings and they're thick all the way down. They just stop. This is just a little nicer version of an endless, of a uh, Flemish twist string. Just a little nicer version of it, okay? Okay, we're gonna start by making the strands. You see this is, zero is the first one, okay? So I'll explain why. We're gonna make a, a loop, see? Put it through it, a slip knot, see? Slip knot, see that slip knot? Okay, so why this is zero is because you haven't made a loop yet, but it's going to start. Okay, see? Then we're going to go around the post. Okay, around this peg that's an AMO peg, I call it. Okay, and we come back. Now you see this says number one. Okay, when we come across, that's a complete loop. Okay. So that's why it's zero and one, okay? See that? Zero and one, okay? I'm gonna make two sevens and one eight bundle. I'll, uh, just for the sake of fast forward in the video, I'll start making the bundles and then uh, I'll show you how each step goes. Started with the red and this is gonna be the eighth strand, okay? We're making two sevens and an eight. See, when I put it on this side, I roll it up. Okay, got a little pressure here. You see this? I'm gonna wax all the strings right on the board. Okay, look. Hmm. Remember, these are gonna be the tapered. So it's not precision by any means as far as the taper goes. So if you're nailing these in, one's a little closer, one's a little further, you'll never notice it. Okay, we're gonna take a razor and we're gonna cut right down the center line here. See the center line? Okay, make sure you got a nice sharp razor blade. This is the loop we started, okay? Get it out of the way. Okay, look. See how it goes skinnier? That's how it's gonna go into the string. Okay, I'm gonna coat this here good with wax.
don't worry when you're making a string about saying, oh, there's too much wax. Not while you're making a string. Okay. I'm gonna remove it off the board here, look. Okay. Boom. Use paper towels. I had napkins here, so they'll work for now, but paper towels work better setting the strings. Okay. Okay, we made one strand. We're gonna lay it on the side, and then we're gonna make the white and blue strands. And then, once I make these three strands, I'm gonna start the video again and show you the difference how I twist. There's a little technique to twist in a string. Okay, we have our red, white, and blue bundles laid out on the board. The board's marked seven, eight, nine, eight and a half. Um, you have to see when you make your board, as far as the length of the strings, it's trial and error until you get your uh, board set up. But eight and a half usually works pretty well as far as the AMO board design goes. So we're gonna grab these pinch them together at eight, okay, see, like that, and then we're going to start to twist them, let me see if I can come a little closer for the twisting, okay, okay, all right, just going to remember, like red, white, and blue, okay, so what we're going to do is twist one, two, and then what we're going to do is see over, See how I grab these two? White now. We're gonna go one, two, and then I'm grabbing, see I'm grabbing the two with these two fingers like this, see? And over. Okay. Then I'm gonna go blue, one, two, and I'm gonna grab these two and over. Okay, once you start it, you can put it on the peg. Okay. Keep a little tension. See the hook, the pinky there? I'm gonna pinch it until I go down. Red, one, two. Grab the two of these together like that in your fingers, see? Can you see that? And then twist, okay? White, one, two. And then see how they're laying on my finger? Can you see that, laying on my finger there? And then I twist it over, see? Blue, one, two, over. One, two, grab onto two of them and twist. See? That's the technique. One, two, then you grab, you lay these on your finger. You see that? And then twist. So you twist in two at once, okay? One, two, over. One, two, over. One, two, over. One, two, over. Okay. One, two, over. You see how these boards, the board is marked for the AMO? We're only at two inches. We got to get down to like three and a quarter inches. Okay. Okay. So here we go again. Okay, what you could do too is, you see it's we're almost at three. Is you could grab these, make sure they're snug, Make sure to put your finger down a little bit, make sure they're tight, okay? Okay, one, two, over, one, two. Let's see what we got. 
Let's check it out. A little longer, just a little longer for the top loop. Okay, yeah, that's about right now. This could drive you crazy. I just like them to blend together nice. So I kind of look what strings lay in where. Okay, so we have the red. We have the red laying over the top. We're gonna lay the red with the red. Okay. okay. The white. With the white, the white seems to be going behind. I'm gonna drive myself crazy. The white goes behind, because the white's with, only next to the white, and the blue is behind, too, see? Okay. So this way, when you pull them snug, you see? Just roll them together, because you got enough wax there, right? Okay, I'm gonna twist it up good, one, two, over. And we're gonna twist it up good. Remember, you wanna twist it good at the start of this loop. Okay, twist it and over, and over. Okay, now we're gonna start again. Okay. We just did the red, we're gonna do the white. Grab the two, over, blue, one, over, red, one, two, over. White, one, two, over, blue, two, over. To over. What you could do too is you could put this on the loop now that you started, see? And you can hold it, okay? And then what you do is you don't want these strands to get too tangled down here. You run your fingers through them, okay? Let me get this set. Just run your fingers down and separate them, okay? Okay, we get the white, the blue. See, the key is for these here is when you do the red, you, you lay these two on your finger and you flip them all over, see? Two, flip them all over. Flip two of them over together, see? I hope you can see this on the video. That's the technique. Twist one, two. You lay them on your finger, cover them up, and twist them towards you. One, two, twist them. Okay, now like I said, you can grab, now it's on this post, you can grab down here and pinch it, see? Okay, we're almost done with this loop. One, two, over. white and blue okay we're talking I don't want to get confused okay red twist two over white twist two towards you and blue red I'm gonna separate these again red Two over, white, and blue. Okay, separate them. Red, white, and blue. Okay, separate them. Okay, now that all the tag ends, okay, don't worry about these hanging out. It's kind of like Chinese handcuffs as you twist them. They're interwoven, and as you pull them, they tighten up. We're gonna trim these tag ends. Nothing wrong with that. Each one of these strands holds 70 pounds, just for your knowledge. And now what we're gonna do is put this paper clamp on, see? Now we're gonna check it out, okay? Okay. 
for the most part, we got the red with the red, the white with the white, and the blue with the blue, okay? See? Okay. And if it's a little off here, don't worry about it. Unless you're a perfectionist, then you can play a little bit more, a little more with how the strings lay, but it looks very nice, okay? And then we're going to go to the next step. Okay, I have a paracord loop that I put through the loop end, okay, and I pull it through itself here, okay. We're going to go over the hinge of the door and show you how I separate the strands and set them properly for the next step. Okay, I have the paracord loop hung up on a door hinge. And what I'm going to do is take each one of these strands and unwind them and then rewind them. Otherwise, you just want the right amount to twist in it. If you don't have enough, the strings will blend together. If you have too much, it looks like tight ropes twisted together. So what I do is take a strand like, we'll start with the red, and I'll split it up top. And I put the paper towel in between. Okay. And you have to keep tension on this. And just slide your finger down. If you keep tension, it'll unwind very nicely. If you don't, it binds up, see? But if you keep tension on it and slide it down, it's untwisting. See? Untwisting. Okay. Yeah, look. Okay. Then I'm going to just run it once or twice here. Okay, we untwisted this one set. Okay, going to do the white and the blue. Okay, we're untwisting the white. See how quickly you can do it? Okay. You got to run it up and down a little bit. Okay, you have to unwind the blue. Then I'll show you how we twist them. And we start making the end loop, which will be small. Because I have the camera higher, <laughs> it lifts off the door. Okay, but what we're going to do now is just show you how we twist it. Okay, we're going to take these and each one, I just hold it up a couple inches here, and I'm going to put twist back in. That's my helper, Shadow. Shadow always wants to help me. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and it popped off again because it's too high. So hold on. Last one is the blue. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Okay, can you help me, Shadow? Then once I got these, put my fingers through. Okay, see, I get all three of them here. Okay, I'm going to hold it lower so 
also don't pop off. Basically setting that seven twist in the string. Like I said, it's only popping off that door hinge because I have the camera high. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is look. See, they're all lined up again. I'm going to grab it down about eight inches or so. Okay, eight inches or so. Okay, like that. Okay. I'm going to take it off. And we're going to go over to the board and start twisting the end. Okay, we're going to take this loop end. This end here that's complete. Drop it on my right side. We're going to lay these strands on the board. Okay. So it really don't matter how you do it, but I'm twisting them red, white, and blue, so. Okay, we're going to grab it at the eight and a half mark. Okay. Got an eight and a half mark. And then we're going to come closer here. Okay. All right, and this is going to be shorter than the three and a quarter. One, two, I'm grabbing both of these over, red. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Okay, we're going to put it on the peg. Okay. I'm going to pull it snug, okay. Okay. One, two. Flip them both over. One, two. Flip the bolt over. I'm just going to go through this a little faster. Okay, now remember we said we got it on the peg. So what we could do is hook it here and hold it here. Okay, and then we're going to pull it and stretch it. Remember these boards numbered, so we're going to see what we got. We got one, two, just shy of three. Let's hold it up. We want a smaller loop, right? Okay, that'll be good for an end loop, okay? Just shy of three inches, okay? We're going to put the white, the white goes behind, huh? so we'll put the white like this here. Let's take a look at the blue. The blue, blue is underneath, put the blue with the blue, okay. and the red is like that, see the red's close, oh, okay, so I'm going to start with the red, twist it a couple times tight, I'm going to grab the white, away, back, the blue, away, we're going to grab the Two together, see? Okay, I'm gonna put it on the board so I could make it nicer. I don't have to worry about showing on the camera. Okay, get a little slug here, a little slug here. Okay. Okay, we're coming along. Now that we've been through this before, when I get to the end, I'll show you what we do. Okay, now that we're almost at the end of the small loop, I'm gonna twist it a few more times. And what I wanna show you is, as you're twisting this too, you stick your finger in, and you, you slide it down so you can untwist. As you're twisting, you're twisting up the strands. So you just run your finger through and untwist them. Okay. 
Okay. We're basically done. You run your fingers through it, make sure it's nice, give it a little tug. Put the clamp on. Don't worry if any pieces are sticking out, you trim them. And by the way, when you trim this, you need special shears, like fishing shears, um, because this material is tough. So it's the same kind of thing that you would use for braided fishing line. I use Dr. Slick. I just wish there was something that would stay sharp and last a little longer. Okay, off to the next step. Okay, looks pretty good, right? See, see the whites, the white together, the red, the red, we do the best you can, okay, when you make these three color strands. Okay, we have the top loop, once again, hung up on my hinge. We're gonna take paper towel and we're gonna separate these strands a little bit, okay? And put the fingers through them like that. Okay, see how they got them separated there like that? And I'm just gonna kind of set them by making friction. And what we're doing is removing some excess color that's on these strings. And we're ensuring that the strands don't blend in together. Okay. Okay, now before we remove the clamps, we're gonna twist it clockwise. Twist it about 30 times. We'll take the clamp off. Okay. Then we're going to measure. This is 62. And it's going to require like a 58 inch string. So let's see. Let's see what we got. Got to twist it a little more. Okay. Let's see what we got here now. A little more to go. See, normally when I make these strings, I'm holding them down a little more angle, and I don't have to worry about that popping off at all. Okay, I'm gonna get a little stretch tug there. Let's see. Pull everything nice and tight together. Okay, we're at 58, which is what we want to be. So what we do now is we're going to take the paper towel and set those three strands together. Go all the way up to the top. Okay. And then we're going to take this loop off. Got my friend Shadow here, Shadow the Cat, is helping me. She always helps me, whether I want it or not. Okay. Okay. Hello, Shadow. 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 Okay, we're going to put this on the bow now. Okay. I'm gonna put these on the bow, it came out nice. Okay, I think it looks very nice. Okay. We have it on the bow. Brace height set at eight and a quarter. Just to save time for the video, I'm go there's a video on how to put the serving on the bow. I'm gonna put a serving on this. And I also have a video on how to make puff silences. And I'm going to start the puff silences to show you how I cut inside the nails to make micro puffs. We're going to make a micro red, white, and blue puff for this setup. Should look very nice. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to put a serving on it. Once again, you go to Bearbow Joe, you could look on how to put a serving on. I'm going to use 0.24. Okay, what I usually do with the serving is. 
I started a half inch, a half inch higher than the top of the bow square. Okay, half inch higher to three quarter of an inch higher. Okay, if a guy shoots split fingers, sometimes I'll go a little higher. Okay, so we're going to put the serving on and then come back. I'm going to show you how I cut the puffs. I have videos on how to make the puffs and how to uh, install them, but I'm going to show you how I cut them. Okay, here we are. I just want to show you my string board. These were like 10 penny nails, I guess. I cut the heads off and uh, polished them. You can use a finishing nail, I guess. But here's the tie off post. It's about three inches away. And the wrap post are approximately two inches from center to center, okay? Two inches. And we're gonna make micro puffs. If you want bigger puffs, after you tie them, you slide them off and you put the scissor through the loops and cut them through the loops. But if you make the micro puffs after we tie them, we cut them on the inside of the nails. Okay, let me go get my shears and uh, we'll start the video. Okay, um, we're going to start wrapping these up. There's different ways you could do it. You could see you start with um, a slip knot and put it on the tie off post. Okay. Now you have a choice of things you could do. You could put all three, red, white, and blue together and, you know, carefully unwind them and wrap them all. And every time you make a loop, it's three. So three, six, nine, 12, probably want like 21, maybe a little more uh, wraps. It depends on how thick the bundle looks to you, okay? But usually 22, 23, 24, something like that. Because these aren't the thickest and they aren't like microfine, okay? So they're, they're fairly thin, okay? So what I think I'm gonna do just to see how they come out with is I'm gonna try seven wraps of each color in time and see how it looks. Okay, so now once again, when I come around, now I made a complete turn, that's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Then I'm gonna make like a slip knot here. Remember these things don't have to be tight on. You just you just hold them until you tie them off. Okay, so I put a little slip knot. Okay, and I'm gonna pull it snug. Okay, see that? Now, if you overlap them, like I'm doing now, you see how I'm overlapping them? I'm going to get the red. I'm going to put a slip knot here. Okay, watch, put the slip knot here. Okay. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap right on top of the white bundle. I'm not going to go keep on going up. So I got one two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Okay, and I'm gonna tie it off. I'm going to do the blue, put a slip knot, okay, here we go, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. Okay, then I'm going to tie it off. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so let's slow. Now you get a couple of strands. I'm using the B55, which is easy to cut. You know, see I got B55, 10 inches, or so we'll do it, you know. And what you do is you put it underneath, kind of get it centered, right? So you gotta kind of center it. And then what you're doing is, you know how you tie a regular square knot? Well, you go once, twice, three times instead of twice, okay? This way when you cinch it down, you see? It stays. Pull it snug, don't cut your hands. These, the string material cut your hands, just tight though. Okay, then you put another square knot on top. Okay. Now here's where the big shears come in. Okay. You don't have to pull it tight. You're just kind of holding it together. You put the shears right against the post and squeeze all the way down in one shot. And if you don't get it all, it's okay. If it's a little crooked, you could trim it. You know what I mean? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip this around to the other side here. Okay. And you gotta make sure you don't cut the tags. So make sure the tags are out of the way. Okay, you got them both out of the way. And the same thing here, you're not pulling tight. You're just kind of holding it there, right? And one good swoosh, look at that, okay? And here's our red, white, and blue puffs. So I'm gonna make the other set, okay? There's a video on how to install these, so I won't make this video any longer than it is, all right? But now you know how to make the micros. You cut inside the two inch nails. Okay, I'm gonna put them on and show you the finished product. Okay, it looks pretty nice. I installed the puff silences. Pluck it a few times to puff them up. Look how nice, right? Red, white, and blue. Okay, like I said, there's different ways of making strings and puffs and everything else. This is just how I'm doing it. You're welcome to try it. I hope you like it not and you got something better you always do what works for you everybody's different okay so that's the end of the video go to Bearbo Joe to learn more on how to make puffs how to install them uh, my first video on how to make a Flemish twist string okay and if you're curious how I split the string to put the puffs in I separated the blue and red and split the white I put it in between the white okay and just another thing is I always set these on like 62 inch bows, 60 inch bows, 12 inches down. It kind of works really good. If you have a little longer bow, you may want to put a little longer down. Okay. If you have a shorter bow, maybe you want to put like 11 inches or so. A little bare super mag or something. So that's the end of my video. I hope you like it.